guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 65. Models Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three videos a week and you stream every single night. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week I had a wonderful week of wargaming and almost none of it had anything to do with Games Workshop, which was kind of a nice little change. I still love Games Workshop games, but it was fun to try out a few other things. One of the big things I have been trying out, been uh, maybe, you know, trying out another skirmish war game, but uh, Dead Zone is very cool. Dead Zone is very much a combination of like, 6th, 7th edition, 40k, and I don't know what else. It's based on, it's a grid system, and it uses uh, D8s, which is actually an idea I had. I'm, I'm taking credit for it. It was my idea that they stole years ago when they made this, but uh, I, I wanted to see um, 40k or kill team in a D8 system because you have those two extra dice results, and so that gives you more play when you're making units unique or not. And so I really got a kick out of this. Games Workshop makes up for that, and to the way that they make units unique is that they add tons of special rules, re-roll special abilities, whereas just those two extra pips on a D8 gives you a lot more options to just make units a little bit better or worse than each other. So I've really been getting a kick out of that. But I also tried another brand new game for me. Well, I didn't try the game, but I bought a thing. Uh, I was at my, I was at the friendly local game store, and I've always had my eye on TD Combat's Drop Zone Commander and Drop Fleet Commander. Drop Fleet Commander is the newer one, but I really like spaceships. Weirdly, I, I like playing with toys, but I never really play with my miniatures. I don't know why, but I just, I never really play with them. But spaceships, yes, I love spaceships. I love just flying them around and swooshing them and like, Anytime I'm procrastinating, it's super easy for me to just pick, not do what, not, not do my work and then just pick up a spaceship and be like. Meowsh. So I've, I've always had my eyes set on some of the cooler spaceships in Drop Zone and Drop Fleet. This is the Pompeius Battlecruiser from Drop Fleet Commander. I think if I was going to play either of the games, I would probably pick Drop Fleet Commander, especially since I play so many ground battle games. I mean, Star Wars Legion, Kill Team, uh, you know, maybe maybe a little bit of Dead Zone, Malifaux. I'm always pushing models around a board as if, you know, as playing a battle. I think it'd be really fun. You're in space and you got your spaceships. I know it's, it's functionally the same thing. You're pushing models around a board, but there's just something different about being spaceships in space versus miniatures on a battlefield. It just feels different. It feels it feels more interesting. And I, I think, I don't know if I'm gonna play Drop Fleet Commander. If anybody plays Drop Fleet Commander, please let me know in the comments below all about it. Give me the rundown. I would love to know more because my dream, my dream would be I play every game out there. I don't know if it's possible, but uh, it probably is not, but I would love it. I would love Anytime anybody brings up any game, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. And then I just know everything about it because I like miniature war games. But I think that this is such a cool spaceship. It's cast in resin. It's very nice. It has a few flaws. I feel like this particular faction in, is prone to flaws. Um, so there's a bunch of different factions in the game. There's the humans, there's the technolo technologic, the more technologically advanced humans, which is this uh, race. There is uh, the alien plague, which they're um, not symbiotes. Uh, they're the opposite. They're parasites. Um, they're the parasitic alien race, which is evil. And they're very like each HR Geiger alien. Um, they're insectoid. Their technology is another. There's another race that is also really cool. I think if I didn't, if I didn't really like the look of the technologically advanced humans, I would probably go with them, but there's spaceships are very psychedelic. They're bright orange, that's how they're painted on the box art. But they're made of, of rings that are like covered in flowers or feathers. It's it's really, really cool. I've seen a lot of like psychedelic art that's like shapes and lines and it's just a mess, but it's not a mess. It's like a kaleidoscope. How 
Even though it's a huge jumble of nonsense, it's arranged in like perfect geometric symmetry. And so that alien race is really, really cool. And then there's also just regular humans. And then I think there's like marauding humans. Um, please correct me. I Everybody loves to correct me in the comment section and I love it too, because I get to learn things and uh, it's fine. This particular race is prone to manufacturing errors and defects just because the, the design of them is really, really intense greebling and then perfectly smooth sections. And so it doesn't really matter if there's small flaws in all of the technology bits, but you can super see flaws in the perfect smooth areas. And so I'm going to have to do a little bit of gap filling and a little bit of smoothing. But I really like I really like this spaceship. It's so cool. I've been I've been doing a lot of this just and these wings actually come off. They amazingly for a resin miniature, they actually pressure fit in really nice. Uh, it also came with guns. And so I need to clean up the guns and then I'll probably end up magnetizing it. Even though I haven't, I don't really have an intention of playing the game. I still want the option just so that when I'm procrastinating writing my scripts or something, I can either have the wings or I can have the giant guns when I'm swishing it around my desk. But very, very fun. And speaking of some other things, not Games Workshop, there was some big old news for the game Star Wars Legion, which I love the game Star Wars Legion. Often when I'm not working on things for videos or just painting my other 40K stuff, it's usually Star Wars Legion. I have I have quite I have a Star Wars Legion pile of shame now. I didn't used to, but now I totally have one. But they have re come out with some Star Wars Legion battle forces. Battle forces are just like combat patrols or start collectings from Games Workshop. It's a whole bunch of units shoved into one box and it looks like the Star Wars Legion ones are going to be an amazing deal. They're all coming in at $150, which is high. I, I I liked the old battle. I liked the price of the old, the battle forces where they were like $100 because ah, crossing that $100 threshold. Ugh, I don't I don't love to do it, but it looks like that's the world we live in now. Uh, I do really like the new Games Workshop combat patrols in that they are actual, you really do get an army and the points match. So if you and your friends buy the the um, combat patrols, it all works out. It is smarter because back in the day, you know, the Space Marine, uh, the Space Marine Star Collecting came with like a Dreadnought and some squad tactical Marines and a Captain and Terminator armor. And that was a lot of points worth of models. And then the Orc Star Collecting, I think it had like, there, I mean, there were many over the years, but there was one with like, a squad of orc boys, a pain boy, and a death dread, which is not very many points, not an HQ model. It, it, you know, you would almost need to buy, the orc player would almost need to buy two boxes for every the Space Marines one box. Good for, good for Games Workshop for making things make sense. And then bad Games Workshop for making them more expensive. And you know, I'm sure, yes, they do come with a lot more things, but meh. But speaking of Star Wars Legion's battle forces, they have one for each faction, the Re the Rebels, the Empire, the Clones, and the Droids. And ah, they're really tempting, Some, especially some of these. I play the Rebel faction. I mean, I want to play all the factions, but currently I play the Rebel factions. I have around a thousand points because typical games are what, at 800? So yeah, I probably have about a thousand points of Rebels. And it just so happens that the Rebel start collecting, no, the Rebel Battle Force, is chocked full of all of the models I don't own. Ah, it comes with Leia, Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2-D2, four Tauntaun Riders, and four squads of Rebel Veterans. And it also comes with the 1-4 FD Laser Cannon Team, the stationary cannon for the Rebel Alliance, which has never actually been that good in game, but I would be happy to have it. And what makes this the Rebel Star Collecting? I, I think the Rebel Star Collecting might be the best one. I keep calling Star Collecting. It's a Battle Force, a completely different thing. What makes this so appealing is it comes with C uh, C3PO and R2D2. And previously, to get C3PO and R2D2, which if you're a Rebel player, you really kind of want. Also, if you're just a Star Wars fan, you really kind of want. You had to buy the Crashed Escape Pod, which was kind of a cool model and it does have extra rules to make it a terrain, like a, a terrain piece that you can actually interact with in the game. But 
it really was just a tax to buy C3PO and R2D2 because, you know, you would bring them in every game. I don't know if you're going to be playing with the crashed escape pod every single game. And it just made a box that could have costed like $20 or $25, like $50. So, so it's amazing to get them in this box. Ah, and it comes with Leia, which is the HQ I want. It comes with Chewbacca. Who doesn't love Chewbacca? This, ah, oh, I'm going to buy this so hard. It's going to be great. Ah, and then my pile of shame is going to double. But literally my Star Wars Legion army will pretty much double though. This comes with a ton of stuff. It's Hoth themed. So it actually is all of the kits that uh, of rebels who are in Hoth gear. But the rebel gear is kind of, if you just paint it green, you're all of a sudden not on Hoth. So yeah, this is going to be very exciting. I'm excited to get those Tauntaun Riders. Four Tauntaun Riders is going to be pretty sick. But moving on from the rebels, the Imperials are also Hoth themed. For the most part, the it comes with Darth Vader, which is not the greatest pick because Darth Vader also comes in the starter sets. And Star Wars Legion has excellent starter boxes. There are two right now. There is the, M the Empire, there's the classic trilogy, and then there is the prequel. And they're both really good. They're chocked full of models. If you buy the box, it comes with everything you need to like start having like real games of Star Wars Legion. And then, you know, you just maybe add one or two more boxes and a couple of red solo cups for terrain. But I really love the start, the starter boxes for Star Wars Legion. And it's great that there's two because some people are bigger original trilogy fans. And so they want to play it. There's the rebels and the stormtroopers. But then some people are, you know, really into the prequels. And so they want to play the battle droids and the clones. I think I would lean towards the battle droids and the clones, but I want to collect all four factions. So I started with the rebels because they were the ones I'm least interested in, but Having collected them, it's actually making me made me really jazzed about the Rebel Alliance. But this the Blizzard Force Battle Force Starter Set. Interesting, it's called a Battle Force Starter Set, even though I mean I suppose it's the starter set of your army, but you would still need more models because you need enemies to, to battle. I guess if you bought this and then your friend bought this and then you bought the overpriced dice sets and the movement dials, then uh, you're ready to go. But I don't know about the, the word starter set if it doesn't give you what you need to play the game. I mean, I guess starter means start. It doesn't mean start playing the game. I don't know. I don't know if I like that they put the word starter set. It complete pedantic. It doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, I really like the, 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 you know, getting into the game boxes. I got one right there. So yeah, this, this is the box to buy if you want to start playing the game. Like if you want to buy a box, bring it home and start playing. Because if you buy one of these, it doesn't come with the the uh, dice you need and it doesn't come with the movement templates that you need. You cannot play the game without those two things. So, meh. Also for anybody getting into Star Wars Legion, you have to buy a lot of the specific dice. There's no way around it. I suppose you could buy D8s and then no, you really couldn't buy D8s and just memorize what dice results equal what, what, you know, a hit or a miss or a critical. I suppose you could buy blank D8s and then Sharpie on what you want. Um, you could totally do that because really the dice are expensive for this game and you need at least three sets. And I've come across things in my game where I would have needed a fourth set, but I just re-rolled a miss. But I don't love doing that. It's Obviously, a perfect world. I have all the dice I need to make the roll I need to make. But yeah, you need dice. You need the specific Star Wars Legion dice. This box comes with, I think, three of each, three, uh, three of each type. And then when you buy more, it also comes with three of each type. But anyway, the Blizzard Force Battle Force Starter Set. It comes with an ATST. Really cool. I like the ATST a lot. It's a really, really fun model. It's big. Star Wars Legion is actually scaled really well. I'm pretty sure everything is in like the proper scale. Vehicles might be a smidge smaller than they would be, but only being a smidge smaller, smaller than they really should be, they are still humongous on the tabletop, which I think leads to the only flaw I really have of Star Wars Legion, which is vehicle movement is a little bit finicky because in Star Wars Legion, you actually have these movement dials or these movement sticks that have a joint and it works perfectly for the infantry. You know, you take an inf infantry man, you put him on one side of the stick, you put him to the other side of the stick, that is his movement. But for the vehicles, they're just so big, it's sometimes 
kind of often very difficult to move your little stick jointed stick in a way where your big base can move from here over to there without interacting with the terrain of the board. And you want a lot of terrain on the board because that makes the game more interesting. But anyway, it comes with the ATSD, which is really, really cool. It comes with four Z, uh, 74Z speeder bikes, which is a classic speeder bikes from Endor. And if you just paint it white, then it becomes a Hoth speeder bike because this is a Hoth themed set. Oh yeah, and it comes with Darth Vader, which isn't that great because Darth Vader comes in this box, the box that everybody already owns but it's fine. It could have come with General Veers because he was on Hoth, like he was at the Battle of Hoth, so that would have made much more sense. Why doesn't this come with General Veers? That's, what? Anyway, and it also comes with three squads of snow troopers. Really, really good. I like it a lot. It's fun. Totally should have come with General Veers. That blows my mind. I mean, I guess Darth Vader was also present on Hoth, but I mean, he just showed up for one second to watch the uh, the Millennium Falcon fly away. So, meh. And moving on to the 501st Legion Battle Force, the 501st Legion Battle Force starter sets. Uh, this one, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of in love with both of these boxes, the prequel era boxes, but it comes with Anakin Sky Potter because it's a 501st set. And so you got Anakin Skywalker and the 501st Clone Troopers. And then it comes with three sets of ARC Troopers and two sets of phase two Clone Troopers. That's a lot of ARC Troopers. I wonder, I don't know that much about how ARC Troopers play, but they are more of an elite. Uh, I'm sure it's cool to have, you know, so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, 14. So it's, you're gonna get 21 ARC Troopers, which is kind of cool. And then phase two clone troopers and an ATRT. So yeah, this is gonna be a classic, classic set. I'm really surprised that they gave you three sets of ARC Troopers and two phase two. I would have. I would have expected that to be flipped so that you had tons of regular clone troopers and then a few elite choices, like a few of the arc troopers, but I don't know, maybe it's interesting. And I, you know, I love the ATRT, although I don't think I'll ever buy an ATRT for the clones because I already own three for the rebels and it's basically the exact same model. So I think maybe I'll probably go with the speeder bikes, the clone trooper speeder bikes for my clone army. But yeah, great box. I really, really like it. And it's good to get Anakin, Sp Anakin Sky Potter because he does not come in the starter box for the prequel era. And speaking of the prequel era, probably one of my favorite things in all of Star Wars, the battle droids. And this box, once again, it commits the cardinal sin of it comes with General Grievous, which comes in the box, not this box, but the prequel era box. He comes in the box. So everybody already owns one or more likely two or three General Grievouses. So it's weird that he comes in the box. I mean, I guess he is the droid commander. He leads the battle droids. He was the general in charge of the separatist armies. And it does, does give you a good excuse to add Magna Guards because having General Grievous and Magna Guards, you know, Grievous was always flaked, flanked by his bodyguard Magna Guards. So I really like the Magna Guard. They're very, very cool. Um, it comes with four squads battle droids, which is perfect. You, you gotta have tons and tons of battle droids. I just painted up a squad of battle droids and it was a lot of fun because they're one color, but I was able to do a lot with that one color. It was really, really fun. And four droidicas. That's a lot of droidicas, but I like that number of droidicas. I think it's a good, good amount. I think the normal box of droidicas comes with four. So, okay, so it comes with four but two of them are wheels and two of them are open. And so I want, so it sounds like you use the wheel when you're using them in wheel mode, which probably gives you an advance to your movement. And then you use them, you use the, you swap them for the open models when they're open. Okay, so I think we've gotten to the bottom of this. So you do get four droidicas, but you actually get eight models. And those eight models represent the closed and the open droidicas. The, this box is rounded out with the AAT, which is a monstrously big Star Wars vehicle. It's one of my favorites, but I've, I've, uh, I painted uh, my friend Sean's for him, and it's a, it's a big honking model. It's enormous, so very cool. Excited about all of those boxes. There's a good chance I'll buy them all. Not right away, I don't have that kind of cash, but I, I'm, I'm sure they'll make their way to me. But all of that, all of those cool things from other games, all of that pales in comparison to the most amazing news. Games Workshop, they, 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 you know, they went so hard with the advertising for this new product, a new era of paints. They made a new animated trailer with, with scenes from the Warhammer universe. 
where models started out gray and then they became painted. This new era of painting, everything was about to change. They came out with some new colors. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, but boy, did they overhype it. I mean, geez. It's just new colors and you could always mix before. It's not like this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened, but it's kind of neat. It's a whole bunch of new contrast paints, 25 essential new colors. Wow, that's a lot. Cause I think there's only like 30 contrast paint colors. So they've doubled the contrast range, which is fine. But I think, I think sometimes you can get, you can have way too much choice. I mean, let's see, there's a blue one, two, three, four, five, there are six new blues, seven if you don't count that one as green. So there's seven new blues plus the what? The three blues that already exist. So that's almost 10 blues. At that point, how do you pick which blue you like? Like, how do you look at the paint rack at the store and be like, okay, what color do I want? And you, I know what you're thinking. You're like, you just pick the blue that you want. But contrast looks different when you've put it on your model and it's dried versus what it looks like in the bottle. And so literally you're gonna be looking at a shelf of identical blue colors because they're all gonna look kind of dark blue because that's what contrast looks like when it's wet and in the bottle. And so I don't know how people are gonna pick you pick the colors. Maybe you, a you ask you know the person who works there like what they would recommend, but they don't know anything. And so it's just, you're gonna have to go online and be like, okay, this guy painted his Eldar with Eldari Emeralds, and I like the look, so I'm gonna go buy Eldari Emerald. That's like the only way you're gonna be able to tell because they look different in person and they, they look different dry versus wet. So that's the only flaw I see with having so many colors. Also, don't be afraid to mix colors. If you're like, I want yellow, but a little bit green, just put, the, put the colors together and then you've got the color you want. And that's gonna, that's gonna help you more in your painting career than buying exactly the color. And they also came out with a bunch of washes and all the washes look excellent. I like Games Workshop washes a lot. I do think Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil are essential hobby products and you can kind of skip all the other ones. Yeah, all these colors are great. There's a, a slightly less brown brown, a slightly more brown brown, a slightly lighter green, an even slightly lighter green, a gray, which doesn't make that much sense to me. I don't know when exactly you would use that. Uh, Targor Rai, Targor Ra shade, which is brown, and Tryon Blue, which is blue. I don't know when you would use these colors. I don't understand. They're getting so specific where it's like, I, I want to paint the loincloth my barbarian. Which shade of brown do I want? I don't know, it's bizarre. But speaking of bizarre, they showed off all of these colors on miniatures and they all look very lovely, except things get a little wonky when you get to these guys. The, I would call these mid-tone contra contrast paints, which is kind of an oxymoron because the way you have good contrast is you have black and white and you want the, sp the entire spectrum to be represented on your model. And the way contrast paint takes advantage of this is that they have um, they have a formula where they, you, you have a dark color, you put it over a light base. And so the dark color becomes, you know, kind of close to black and the light area is kind of close to white. And that's how you get a lot of contrast in one paint color. But if you're dark, you know, you've got black over here and white over here. If your color starts here, you only have this much of the spectrum to work with. And so you don't end up with very much contrast. And you can totally see that in these painted examples. It kind of looks like they're painted with perfectly normal paint. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And I feel like it's going to lead people astray because contrast paint is a very specific thing. It's, it's a tool that does a job of very much like a wash does. And, you know, some colors are not going to work well with contrast paint and some colors will, but I feel like bright orange, bright red, another bright red, bright blue, bright green, and bright yellow. Just, it just doesn't work. I don't know. Very odd. I don't, they don't really look good in this example. I can't imagine them working well in person. What I see them as is the um, glazes that Games Workshop used to make, which were excellent. I really liked the old Games Workshop glazes. They were pretty much replaced with contrast paint. Um, it, they were, they were transparent colors, which 
are really, really nice. Transparent colors really, really help with painting a lot of different things. I really like using inks. And so I could see these kind of being Games Workshop's version of inks, but it's frustrating that they exist in the contrast line, but you just have to remember, well, yeah, some colors will work really, really well and provide a lot of contrast to your miniatures. And some colors are really more for glazing on top of those colors to alter the hue of colors. I don't know, it's odd. But yeah, a lot of these colors look excellent. Uh, some of the ones that got me kind of excited is the Briar Queen Chill. It looks excellent. And I could see that as kind of being an almost one and done color for Night Haunt players. And there's another color, Gragok, Gargox Sewer, kind of looks excellent. It It is a black, but the raised areas are left orange. And so it actually gives a really, really nice rusty, rusty effect. The example they have is this painted on an Orkilikan and it looks great. So I would love to give that paint a try. Really, I mean, I, I could take or leave the Briar Queen Chill. That is the model that I, the paint that I will pick up and play with because I mean, you know, you slap that on some pipes on a little bit of metal. I think that that could be really good. My favorite contrast paints that Games Workshop makes is the black and the white. I think that they are excellent and they are great paints for just knocking things out that you don't want to deal with. I've used it on like white hair, or white armor, you know, black boots, black pants, you just slop it on and you can almost call it a day. I really love those paints. All of the other paints I find a little situational. You know, I'll put on contrast green and then I highlight and shade it and I fix it up. Those two colors are much more like special effect. And I feel like this is also gonna fit into that special effect category where when I want it, I use it, I slop it on and I call it a day. But yeah, Games Workshop came out with like almost 40 new paints and I'm excited about one of them. So good job. This is fine. This It's fine for them to come out with new colors. Totally overhyped. The video was ridiculous. I remember me and Nick watching it and being like, are they gonna do dropper bottles? Like what, what are they gonna do that's gonna change everything? Also, I almost wonder if Games Workshop will never be able to do dropper bottles because the second that they announced dropper bottles, they have completely killed the value of all of the millions of Games Workshop paint pots that are out there. So they would almost have to like stop producing paint for like a year or two and let all of the available stock sell off and then come out with dropper bottles. Otherwise people are gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna buy the Games Workshop pots. I'm just gonna wait for droppers to come out. And then you've got thousands of stores across the world that are like, oh God, we have $2,000 of paint that is worthless now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they could ever do it. I also think, I also think that the Games Workshop pots are fine. I know I'm wrong. Uh, and I know that some, some people in some climates have a, a really, really bad time with the paints drying up, but um, I think they're fine. I've never had any go bad on me. Um, but I believe everybody who says that the paint does go bad on them. I also think uh, a strategy for having that not happen is don't keep your paint pots in direct sunlight. Don't keep them sitting in the same place forever. Like, you know, those la beautiful laser cut paint racks where the paint sits. I feel like the danger of those is that everything sits and settles and is often also in the light and open to the air. And so your paint just settles and the, the water starts to evaporate and things can start to go bad. I have my paint. I used to keep my paint in tubs, but event now I have too much paint for that. And so I actually have an upright storage unit or a storage shelving unit and I just have the paint haphazardly thrown in there. But what's great about that is every time I look for a paint, I go rooting around and it knocks everything around. And so nothing sits in the same spot for too long. And so I actually find all of my paint pretty much stays shooken up or fairly well mixed. And then when I take it out, you know, three seconds of shaking and then I'm good to go. And that's how I found none of my games or paint has ever gone bad on me. So just, you know, just an idea for people who are have, struggling with the games or pots. And they are a bit worse than dropper bottles, but dropper bottles are also a bit worse than tubes of paint. So there's, there's no, there's no perfect thing out there, but uh, I don't know if anybody out there is planning on investing in some, you know, Alibaba uh, cheapy dropper bottles and then spending an afternoon moving all of their paint to dropper bottles. Just don't just paint your stuff. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. But that I, I think that that is the biggest, silliest waste of time. And it's not like those bottles that you're buying cheapy, cheap bulk on Amazon or whatever are good. 
Like Vallejo and Army Painter and stuff, they buy good dropper bottles. And even those break. I've had I've had those break on me where the tip, where cracks start to appear in the tip and the paint is able to squirt out the sides. Or I've had this particularly with Scale 75 paint where I've had it, the tip, the applicator tip clog. And then I apply just a little too much pressure because I'm impatient and then bleh, all of the paint shoots out. So nothing is perfect except tubes. Tubes are very nice. They keep your paint safe from the air. They keep their, your paint safe from the light. I, tubes are obviously the best choice, but we give up something for convenience for dropper bottles and pots because it lets you see the paint a little bit more obviously and it's a little bit more self-evident of what you're meant to do with it. So yeah, the new Games Workshop colors are fine, but you know what's great? That's right, the Eons of Battle Patreon. We have a Miniature of the Month Club. This month we have the Vine Knight, which is a gorgeous mini that I had a great time painting up with Army Painter Speed Paint, by the way. We also have live hobby hangouts, one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week, tons and tons and tons of terrain STLs and more. The best way to support us is head over to Patreon to get even more Eons of Battle. And we have merch linked in the description. I had a great week of wargaming. I'm very tired and I have a lot of things to do. So goodbye.